This is the presentation of our TVCG paper. Do you believe your social media data, a personal story on location data biases, errors, and plausibility as well as their visualization? Let's start with something obvious. Cannabis plants are cool. And there are some people who like to see them in the wild. So let's look at the example of this botanically interested researcher a little bit more closely. He may have lived in certain places. He may have traveled to other places for vacation and saw plants. And maybe he also went uh, for some business trips and saw plants elsewhere. But now he goes to a new place. So what about there? Of course, he can search on the web for locations. and There are sites for that. But they mostly mark botanical gardens and stuff. He can also do a regular search. But that also usually doesn't provide much information. And there's a good reason for that. Most of these plants are protected, and some are even on the red list. So people don't really share their information. So what now? Give up? So this researcher looked on image sharing sites, such as Panoramio, which isn't around anymore, and more recently on Flickr. The good thing about these sites is that they not only are for image sharing, but they sometimes also have information about what's depicted, and sometimes even where the picture was taken. So he uses the APIs from these sites, searches for relevant images, and downloads the data. Next, this data has to be filtered. We select images that have GPS data associated to them, and then have to filter out those images that are not relevant. For example, there are fake carnivorous plants, carnivorous plants in botanical gardens, and also plants kept at home. So we filter those out. This leaves us with a list of images with associated GPS data and a bunch of other data. We can now use this data to explore where carnivorous plants live. We created a tool for that that we showed at Viz 2019 as a poster, and there's lots of interesting data that we can look at. For example, we can look at the global distribution of the plants, we can look at distributions of specific species and compare them with established distribution uh, maps, we could look at the temporal distribution of our data, both over the years as well as within a year accumulated for each month, or we can look at elevation data for all plants together or for specific species again. But in this work, we wanted to look a little bit deeper and look at errors and biases in the data. Of course, we know that GPS has an inherent accuracy limit, but maybe people also manipulated their data. And what other errors or biases are there? The first bias is immediately obvious. The number of pictures per person is not even. There is, in fact, a power law distribution here that very few people post most of the images. The same is true for the number of pictures per species. Also, some species get a lot of posts, others very little, or most of the species get very little. But what about geographic data bias, and how can we analyze that? Well, the first thing is to compare to a baseline, and for that we use the Encyclopedia of Life, which is a subgroup of Flickr images that collects those with GPS locations of species, any species. Here's the global distribution of posts in this group, color-coded by number of pictures in a certain region. Let me first remove the smallest of these groups so that we see the bins with the highest number of posts more clearly. And then let's compare that to our own data. We see that the distributions are similar, but there are big holes on the planet where there's virtually no observation. Why is that? Well, that may have to do with cultural biases or population biases. Where do people live? So we can look at a map of where people live on the planet and see that there's regions where there is lots of people, but where we have virtually no posts in our data. So that clearly points at a cultural bias. These people just don't use Flickr or Panoramio. But at the same time, there's also regions where there's holes in our data, but there shouldn't be any cultural difference to people living nearby where we do have data. And that simply points at a different habitat. Plants just don't live in certain climate regions. And both effects together then explain the differences of our distribution data for a given species to the distribution of the species as established by botanists. We can also look at a much smaller scale and find that the data is heavily biased towards places where people can easily get access to, such as roads and paths. But what about data errors? For that, we looked at if we can verify data by posts of others and posts of the same person. First, we looked at if for a given post of a given species, other posters have also posted the same species nearby, the same genus nearby, or some other plants nearby, here indicated by green, yellow, and orange. We can also get an indication of the correctness of data if we look if a given poster has posted more than one image at the same exact GPS location. If it's only one, here in green, things seem okay. If it's two, then that becomes questionable. 
And if it's more than two, as indicated in orange and red here, then there's clearly some manipulation going on. Of course, we can also verify the data directly. So here I compared sites from the data set with locations that I knew about before in green. One example for the Netherlands for a sundew species, another example from Canada for pitcher plants, and another example from the US for cobra lilies. Of course, I also tried to find new sites based on the data. And here's a successful attempt from Spain for a butterwort. Another example from Spain also for a butterwort, as highlighted here. But there were also cases where I didn't find any plants, even though the data indicated that there should be plants, as in this example from Portugal. But why would that be? Does the data lack precision? So let's look at this example here more closely that I showed before. In the center, we have my site that I recorded at my visit, together with another site that was in the data before. But then there's also these other three places that indicate the same plant, but that are far away. Let's look at one of them more closely. Luckily, this is data from Flickr, and we do have the image for this. So this is here. And when I saw that image, I was flabbergasted because it reminded me of something that I had seen myself. So here's my image. Look at this region, and you can see it's exactly the same location. But that location that was recorded for that data point is more than five kilometers away. That's way beyond the imprecision of GPS data. So clearly, this data has been manipulated. And the same person was also responsible for my unsuccessful attempt in Portugal before, as well as many other places in my data set. In fact, this person is the second largest contributor in our data. As a visualization researcher, of course, I wanted to see if there's a pattern. So I started to plot the image data. Horizontally, we place each image that was taken, both by the date of the first picture of a day, as well as following pictures of the day by the time in the day. To make sure that this works, we look at the geographic distance between two successive images that were taken in a day and plot these with a logarithmic distance between them. In addition, we double encode the distance by speed patterns. We look at the apparent speed that the poster must have traveled and group this by believable to unbelievable categories, here indicated between green and red up to purple. There's also special colors for no movement at all and identical times for two images. So then we continue plotting all the pictures in a day with their respective colors. And vertically, we add the data of other days. This results in a visual representation we call the motion plausibility profile. Here's the profile for the person that we had looked at before. We can see that initially, he apparently posted plausible data. Then there was a period where he apparently manipulated the GPS location of every single image which is indicated by the many high speeds, including some apparent jet air travels. And then finally, he apparently placed every image in a day on the same location indicated by the speed of zero. And here you can see the two cases from his data that I pointed out before. We also add a histogram of the different speed classes for better comparison. Here are some examples from the data set for other people. This is mostly believable. Another mostly believable case, believable case with fewer entries. Another one where the poster always put the images at the same location. And finally, one where the time was also manipulated, but here this may be due to the early time where maybe no time was recorded in the data or the same image is posted in two services at the same time. Then we found out that there's actually a service, a naturalist that collects species data specifically from citizen science. And of course, we also created the motion plausibility profile for these cases, and here's an example. We also compared the different data sets to each other, and we can see that iNaturalist is more prevalent in Eastern Europe and Asia than Flickr and Panoramio, for example. In the paper, we talk about a lot more errors and biases, so have a look there if you are interested. But to conclude, let me say that our paper shows that we have to look beyond uncertainty and have to look at errors, biases, and plausibility of data instead of just trying to visualize uncertainty. What's also interesting is that data secrecy is actually quite futile, as, as we have seen, because we can find out about data due to the power of citizen science and other approaches. Our paper has a lot of additional material that I invite you to look at. There's also two versions of the paper, one additional one for readers with color impairments, but we do not share the data intentionally to protect the plants. However, there is a GitHub repository for the script uh, for the iNaturalist data, if you're interested, and the paper also received the GRSI replicability stamp, and all images are CCBY. Thanks a lot for your attention.